I'm Vaughn Leifers with Area Diesel Service. Today we're going to talk about the S300 Board Warner product. Curtis Owens and I'm going to kind of play devil's advocate here and, and give Vaughn some of the questions we normally get from our customers. Today we're, we're focused on S300 and specifically a common question or a common inquiry we get. customer calls in and says, I'd like to have an S366. For us, that's, that's just not enough information. So we're going to get into what that does tell us and more specifically what that doesn't tell us. Vaughn, if I ask you for an S366, what information can you extract from that inquiry? Well, just, just from that basic, uh, breaking it down basically is people are asking for an S300 frame size in the Board Warner product with a 66 millimeter inducer compressor wheel. That's really all it tells us. It doesn't tell us what exhaust housing they would like on it. It doesn't tell us what size turbine wheel would go on it. They're not even giving us any information as to what they want to put it on for us to know if it's the right application for the vehicle in the first place. A lot of times it's probably not what they want, but that's what they've heard and their buddy's got, so that's what they think they need. So the 3 in 366 is the, the frame size, so S200, S300, S400. This is all S300. These are actually all could be considered S366's. Specifically, what is the 66? The 66 part is the millimeters of the inducer of the compressor wheel. So on the small diameter of the compressor wheel is the inducer. Most of the people in the aftermarket world talk about the inducer size, although the engineers at Borg Warner talk about the larger diameter, the back face of the compressor wheel. They're more worried about do they have enough horsepower from the turbine wheel to turn the size of compressor wheel. So most of the time you'll find that it's got the 80 millimeter turbine wheel with this 66 millimeter inducer compressor wheel. Um, although some applications that may um, not work perfectly for their engine. But as you can see with all of these being S366's you see a wide variety of the products just in the, the style of discharge. This one's a straight, this is 90 degrees, this one can go a couple different ways. Smaller hose size and also this one doesn't have a turbine housing on it. This is called a super core. So just in the S300 line we just particularly chose the 66 millimeter to talk about today. So a few years ago these were kind of the go-to S366. These were factory fit to John Deere applications. I think 6081, 81 liter John Deere engines. You know this was always the the Mustang turbo or a guy's got his his pickup turned up a little bit and needs something a little bigger. The sales of those got got to be so good and they left just a little something to be desired and that was really the, the factor yeah, that created the, the SXE, which is the new um, performance-oriented S300. So forever, when, when we sold this, it came with the, the factory turbine housing, which never seemed to be right. Um, we were always swapping the housing, trying to fine-tune for the application, which is the reason that these units, they just don't even include it. Quit throwing them away, just buy the housing with it that you need, uh, when you determine what you're doing. As you said, this was an OE production turbo used in a lot of high performance applications, whether it be polling or drag racing or whatever, street racing, and it evolved into this um, from the Borg Warner EFR turbo line. They've, they've taken their um, compressor wheel arrow and put it into the S300 line in a journal bearing turbo where the EFR is a ball bearing different material turbine wheel and every everything else. but. When they enhanced this thing with the SXE line, they went to a billet compressor wheel or a mach machine from solid compressor wheel. They've changed the, the design of the compressor housing, as you can see, to include a boost port and include a speed sensor port, if you would like. Now, neither of these holes are through drilled from the factory, but there are instructions to um, how to drill these holes out to make them active if you so choose to use them. The compressor housing discharge design, as you can see, is much smaller than either of the other S300 compressor housing discharges. It's also made where as you could cut this hose barb off of the end of this or machine it off and have a V-band flange on the end where then you could put a different elbow or an adapter onto the end of it, such as something like this. You could go to on this thing to now you have your 90 degree elbow similar to this turbo that was made for the John Deere application. But all the 
robustness in those uh, met all OE requirements and stringent testing and everything that Borg Warner has done, but when we push it a little bit further in the performance world, um, sometimes thrust was is an issue because of an imbalance of the wrong housing or, or um, just the application in general. So they speed to death. They also um, incorporated in these SXE turbochargers in the whole line, uh, not just S300s, but um, they went to a 360 degree thrust bearing, which is uh, obviously 360 degrees worth of thrust pads versus the 270 degree thrust pad area in there. So therefore they had to change a few of the internal components as well when they did that. There's also different turbine wheel designs as well as different compressor wheel sizes in the super cores and these, but that doesn't make them the 60, the S366. So uh, that's why we specifically chose these, but you can also see in the turbine wheel designs is different in this one, and this one, and this one, which you can't really see extremely well with it together here, but um, they do a different clipping on the wheel for some applications that require it, but getting back to the thrust bearing. So that's a traditional, you know, factory application. We call that a 270 degree thrust bearing. So the thrust control in the turbo, this is what is keeping the axial play in spec, and this is under a great deal of force and even more so when you start to run these outside of optimal conditions. 360 thrust just finishes the, the circle here and gives you more contact area to control the thrust. So relatively simple but significant upgrade in, in durability and, and thrust control. Tell me what's different about the compressor wheel in the SXE versus the, the John Deere turbos that we've always used or, or known forever. The biggest difference you'll see is the material and how they're manufactured. That's visible. Um, but the design of the fins, the, um, the design of the back of the wheel, which you can't see with the housing installed on it too, um, and the fitment of the housing to wheel has also been changed by the Borg um, engineers to get optimal flow out of this versus that housing there, that housing to wheel combination. They went to the machine from solid design um, to give it more um, ability to withstand higher pressures. The difference in the fin design is um, helping the flow in the pounds per minute that this thing can produce versus um, that one. What is there to be said about, you know, we, we see cycle fatigue failures, so every time this wheel changes RPMs, that wheel shrinks and grows. You spin it faster and that wheel expands, albeit a, a minute amount and as it slows down that wheel contracts. Does the billet have more ability to withstand cycle fatigue failures than a cast wheel? It does but it's only a minor, uh, minor difference in it. Uh, people like the shininess, they like the uh, you know the thought of I have a billet compressor wheel. Um, the high cycle fatigue on them is slightly better but it's not hugely better. I think I was thinking about Somebody went to titanium compressor wheel. Wasn't that a cycle fatigue fix? I believe that's correct. That was yeah. Mac trash trucks or something. So, what do you? What does the end user get? The billet wheel. Everybody billet wheel, billet wheel. So you you want one, you get one. What's it do for you? Well, if it's not again not sized properly for your application, it's uh, not going to do anything for you. You can go too big on the turbo very easily, and that's why you mentioned early on what, what these things were born to go on with the 8 liter John Deere. But now we're putting them on different applications. We're putting more fuel to them. We're taking uh, more cubic inches or RPMs in the performance world and the off-road use, not on highway stuff. That gives you the ability on a billet wheel to match exactly what you're trying to get out of the engine. And that's why the engine data is critical to be able to match the turbo optimally so it falls in a higher percentage of efficiency in the island of the compressor wheel mat. Other thing about a billet compressor wheel is manufacturing of it. Um, you can easily quickly change designs of how you want this thing to look when you're done. Um, whereas a cast wheel you have a whole process of changing the mold and changing how it's made. All these, Although these are a hipped wheel with the, it's, um, the process is poured under pressure and, and makes a much stronger wheel than the non-hipped wheel from many, many years ago. But the billet wheel looks pretty. You can change it 
um, in the machining process to make it whatever you want. Um, much simpler than the cast wheel and it does give you a little bit better durability. I want an S366. What have I failed to tell you? What doesn't that specify? That doesn't specify the turbine side. That doesn't specify the turbine exhaust housing um, size. That doesn't describe the outlet style of the compressor housing that you're looking for. But more importantly, you're asking me for something that is, is certainly runnable on, on an engine, but it may not be optimal for that engine. So give us an opportunity to get some information from you. We're not trying to say that's not what you need. We're trying to make sure that's what you need before we just send you a turbo and then you're upset that well, it doesn't work. It doesn't spool up fast enough. It doesn't do whatever you wanted it to do. Well, sir, you asked for too big a turbo for your engine. Or maybe you killed the thing and you asked for too small a one. With the information that's left out, tell me about the different options on the exhaust side and a little bit about what they impact or, or what they'll what, what you might experience with incorrect components on the exhaust side. Well, the, the main thing is if you go too small on the exhaust wheel end housing, you can choke the engine down. It won't RPM properly. May spool up really good, but you're going to really overspeed the turbine and the rotor group in any of these turbochargers by going to too small here. The, the A over R is an internal size of the housing. It's the area and, uh, over the radius here, and it's an internal engineering number. But for most of us layman people, we go by the number that they cast onto the housing on the outside or in the throat of these. Um, some of these particular ones have 88 AR in them in an open throat design, whereas all these that we have laying here are a divided throat, which means it has a, the divider wall in the port here on the inlet of the turbine housing. Another thing that is uh, critical is most of these all come with a T4 style or size of foot on them. This is the foot area of the turbo, and um, there are a lot of applications out there that would require a smaller foot design for the manifold. Now we have other ways to to get around this with adapter plates or something like that, but uh, the T3 size here is very common on some older John Deere's, on some Dodge pickup stuff. That's another thing that we don't know by them asking for the S366. The AR that he's hitting on might might have, you know, a 10% adjustment in AR might impact performance more than a 10% adjustment in compressor wheel size. And AR speaks to the volume inside of the turbine housing. So everything leaving the engine comes through this flange into this housing. And the tighter you restrict it, the faster that gas must pass through that housing. And in turn, the harder it's going to drive the turbine wheel which is connected to the compressor wheel and drives the turbo. If you, there, there's, a, there's a trade here, you can, you can constrict this to increase the velocity of the gas and drive the turbo harder, but by doing so you've, you've stuffed a potato in the tailpipe. You've, you've made this more restrictive in general. Uh, and, and there's a fine line between flow and, and drive pressure and that's a, that's a critical thing of specifying a turbo, as well as turbine wheel diameter. And tell us the inducer on the turbine wheel and also the impact and the sizing of the turbine wheel. How does that play into to performance or what you would experience if sized incorrectly? Okay, the inducer on the compressor wheel that we talked about earlier is the smaller diameter here. The wheel gets larger as it goes to the back as the you know, as it's compressing air and flinging it out into the compressor housing, therefore into the intercooler. But on the turbine wheel, the inducer of the turbine wheel is where the exhaust hits it first, so it's the larger diameter of the turbine wheel. The exducer of the turbine wheel is smaller, obviously. Um, so if you mismatch or size your turbine wheel incorrectly, too large slows the thing down, too small um, could theoretically speed the thing up as long as it's not too small. One thing that you run into with turbine housings and turbine wheels matching it to an engine is you got to consider the whole RPM range and where you want this thing to do its work. Where do you want it to come in or spool up or start feeling it from the seat or whatever. So you can size turbine wheel, you can size the clip of the wheel, you can size the AR of the housing. Um, but what you got to do is the fine line that you were speaking of is, is match it to the engine in the range that you want it to work. Now, what has been done many years ago, they went to a very 
um, innovative technology back in the day with the wastegate on it. Um, that was driven by emissions and what it does is it allows the engineers to go to a smaller AR turbine housing which will speed up this wheel faster and get you up to boost pressure. But then you run the risk of this thing going into overspeed by a fixed geometry housing where you can't change anything about it. This, you can go, you can go tighter in here spools it up faster but now we have this wastegate that will open a dump valve or wasting the exhaust off bypassing the turbine wheel and exiting the housing therefore maintaining the ideal rotor speed for the turbocharger yeah it's got a it's got a really bad name in the industry and everybody wants to block it off or crank it closed or get rid of it and they shouldn't have they shouldn't have used the word waste they should have called it a, a turbo saver uh, because that's that's really what it's doing. It's preventing overspeed. You get the attributes of a small housing, uh, good throttle response or, or quick spool, and then when you start really flowing lots of exhaust, more than the turbo can handle, open the valve, bypass around the turbine wheel, slow your turbo down so you don't overspeed and, and ultimately explode or, or damage the turbo. Detrimental damage to turbo and engine perhaps. So I've, I've, I've called you, my buddy said I need an S366, your, your wheels start turning, what else, what are you going to ask me? What do I need to know to give to you to get to the right place? Well I have to tactfully convince you that, uh, or convince myself that that's the right thing um, by asking you questions and although that's what your buddy has and that's what he says you need, do you have the same injectors in your truck? Do you do the same load as he's doing? Do you pull the same uh, trailer or, or whatever. So there's a lot of things that I'm going to try to extract from the customer without trying to belittle the customer as to uh, <laughs> the customer's always right until he's not and then he's unhappy with us. So um, I try to help the customer into the fact that let's find out if that's the best thing for your truck. So it's it's what do you have? What are you looking to go to? Yeah, what's your horsepower goal? And then what's your application? Are, are you getting groceries? Are you pulling a fifth wheel? Are you doing a little bit of both? Are you, uh, you know, we always get, well, I want good fuel mileage, and uh, I mostly uh, take the kids to soccer, but then about five times a year I hook to a sled, and I also drag race, and I need something that's perfect for everything, and, and there just isn't. You can pick a happy medium and not be very good at any of them, but be functional for all of them, or you can focus on one and be good there and be bad at the others. I mean, that's, that's an everyday or is, is I need to do five different types of applications and I need one charger. We just can't get you perfect in all of them. You really need five chargers in that need, situation. Or five to, trucks. To hit, yeah. uh, to hit everything perfectly there. So we've kind of talked about turbos and making sure that they're right for the engine, but some of the things that we have um, in addition to just turbocharger parts is we have some accessories to help mount these things to the engine. So if your exhaust won't hook up to these particular outlets, we have various types of flanges that can go on there um, that will made up with the Mormon flange and be held on by a V-band clamp. Other people don't like these particular things. We make, um, we make a sleeve in our machine shop back here that will made up, still be held on by a V-band clamp that you can weld a four inch pipe onto. Um, we make them in various sizes for three and a half inch up to five inch exhaust if you like that still connect onto these style of turbine housings. And in some of the other housings there's different outlet designs and we make flanges for that as well. We make different couplings for the different types of turbochargers if you're building plumbing to go to your intercooler. So we're trying to help you fit this thing to your race application or to your pulling application um, by making all kinds of different adapters and fittings and flanges and stuff to make it go on. Okay, I need one. How do I how do I get a hold of you? How do I reach out to you? Well you can certainly call our 1-800-637-2658 phone number. That number does ring in all three of our locations in Carlinville, Illinois, Indianapolis, and in Des Moines, Iowa store so that we have representatives standing by at any of those locations to answer your call. The other thing you can do is go onto our website and you can do some research if we decide upon a particular part number, or in this case, part numbers, um, you could go to our website at shopareadiesel.com and order them online. Alright, thank you Vaughn. Yep.